Thank you for checking out SNU's Contract Bank. I'm Roxanne Smithers, co-founder of Smithers and Umewaba. So this video is a brief overview of the Master Digital Marketing Services Agreement. And while it has a long name, it's pretty self-explanatory. This agreement is drafted and tailored for digital marketing consultants and the services that they will provide to their clients. It's set up as a master agreement so that you can not only use the agreement with multiple clients and customers, but if you have repeat clients and customers for which you may have a lot of projects um, and work with them a couple times a year, that you can have them sign one agreement and then you can simply utilize the scope of work feature and statement of work feature in order to detail the specifics of that contract. But all of those statements of work will be subject to the terms of this master agreement. So one of the first paragraphs in this agreement, section two, covers your fees and expenses, how you will be paid for your services, and whether or not you will be reimbursed for any specific expenses that you incur as part of your services. You and your client may agree that um, your firm will front some services or engage vendors that are going to benefit your client in the project and that your client will reimburse you for those costs. Once we've squared away the money, we then look at section three, which covers how the parties can change this agreement down the road if necessary. If the parties would like to make any additional modifications to this agreement, they can do so either in amendment or they can utilize the statement of work feature if they're simply making a modification on a project by project basis. Paragraph four covers authorization and access. If you are going to have access to your client's media accounts or other accounts where they have information, websites, tools, and software, this authorizes you to do so um, and provides a process for you to gain access from your client. Paragraph six covers your services and responsibilities. This details what you are agreeing to do as part of your role as a digital marketer. It also lays out how your client is supposed to provide input, the timing of that input as you provide services and provide deliverables. Paragraph six in turn details your client's responsibilities, what they are going to do um, to make sure that the project is successful and that you have everything that you need in order to provide the services that are anticipated. Paragraph six lays out if your client has any specific guidelines that they would like you to adhere to as you are providing those services, whether they are social media guidelines, brand manuals, style manuals. Uh, this provision um, covers that and the responsibility of the client to make that information available to you so that you can take it in mind as you're providing your services. Paragraph eight details how your client will approve any deliverables or drafts of deliverables or plans that you are proposing as part of your services and as you are providing your services. As we all know in the services industry, a key part of our success is the ability to get not only accurate, but timely information and approvals from our clients. And this paragraph is geared to address that. Paragraph nine covers the ownership of intellectual property that is involved in your service, whether that's information or intellectual property that the client brings to the table that they want you to utilize, or that is intellectual property that you create as part of your services to your client. This provision details who owns what, um, when ownership transfers. Often we put in the agreement that intellectual property that you create, you own until payment is made by your client. Paragraph 10 covers any representations that you are making with regards to the quality of your services, as well as any specific results from your services. 
As we understand, you know, digital marketing services are certainly important. It is a practice, it is an art as much as it is a science. And oftentimes there are many factors that are going to play into how a campaign may resonate with the public and whether or not that campaign translates to specific engagement, specific traction or specific revenue for your client. So we wanna make sure that you are um, not being held responsible for factors that are outside of your power. Paragraph 11 details confidential information that may be shared from your client, as well as confidential information that you may share in terms of your pricing, your process, your strategy, and how you work. This makes clear that the information on either side is valuable and should be treated as confidential information and respected. Paragraph 12 um, protects your employees, your subcontractors, your vendors, um, essentially from poaching um, and details that if your customer or client likes someone on your team a lot and wants, them to, wants to work with them directly, that you have to provide permission for that and that there's a timeline under which they can't do that without your permission. Paragraph 13 covers both the duration of the contract or the term and it also covers how the parties can terminate either this agreement in total or terminate any specific statement of work or project. It also details uh, compensation in case of termination of the contract as a whole or termination of a specific project. Paragraph 14, limitations of liability, puts a cap on either the dollar amount or the type of damages for which you can be held liable or responsible if your client suffers a damage or a loss um, that is a result of your uh, wrongdoing or some issue with the contract. Paragraph 16 is a mutual indemnification provision. What this means is that both you and your client agree that if either one of you are subject to any sort of breach of the agreement or wrongdoing in your performance or the receipt of your performance, and the other wronged party incurs any damages, has to face a legal claim, that the party um, that, that is responsible, the wrong party, will take responsibility for responding to that claim, handling the damages, or handling the losses. This, of course, will be subject to that limitation of liability provision that we discussed earlier. 16 and 17 make it clear that this is not an exclusive relationship. Both you and your customer are perfectly free to engage in um, marketing and digital marketing business relationships with other customers and other service providers. It also details that you are not an employee of your client and that your client cannot bind you to any contractual obligations without your consent. Paragraph 18 states that whatever state you conduct your business in and that you live in, the laws of that state will govern the contract. Paragraph 19 covers what happens if the unfortunate occurs and you and your client are in a dispute with regards to the performance or the results of the contract. This dispute resolution provision calls for the parties to first try to negotiate a resolution and then state that the parties will go to mediation and if neither of those solutions work, that the parties will arbitrate their claim. Now, of course, you can agree to any other process if the parties would like to do something different. This paragraph does state that either party that is successful in pursuing a claim under these provisions will have the opportunity to get reimbursed for their attorney's fees and cost. Paragraph 20 details how the parties will have uh, notice. We encourage written notice for any um, communications, any formal issues between yourself and your customer related to your performance in the contract. Paragraph 21 deals with how the contract is interpreted if there is a dispute and it's reviewed by an arbitrator or a judge. Paragraph 20 states that if the arbitrator or the judge um, finds that any provision of this contract is not enforceable, that the remainder of the contract will stay in place and be enforceable. And finally, paragraph 23 states that 
this agreement is the sum total of the agreement between you and your client. Any prior communications, any prior oral agreements or oral offers um, that are not detailed in this agreement will not be part of the deal that you're making with your customer and your client. So it's very important to put, to put any other provisions that you've agreed to with your client in this document. And then finally, of course, you will have that statement of work, which is a form that you can use over and over again for multiple projects with one client or with multiple agreements with future clients. It details the a description of the services, the, the deliverables that you are going to be providing to your client, the frequency of those deliverables, and the time frame for that performance. The statement of work details the specifics of how you will be paid. You have an option for hourly, a flat rate, um, a re reoccurring payment, whether weekly or monthly, or uh, some other timeline that you'd like. There's also an opportunity for bonus payments if your clients and you agree to some sort of incentive for um, engagement for your work, you can um, negotiate a, a bonus um, payment based upon that engagement. This uh, statement of work also gives you an opportunity to require a retainer or upfront deposit from your client that you can bill against for your services when that retainer is due uh, and what percentage of work has to be done um, for that first deliverable payment. Um, this agreement in the statement of work finally also details when payments are due for reoccurring services and when payments are due for bonuses. Um, you guys can discuss in detail in here any anticipated expenses for which you will be incurred and also what your hourly rate will be for any work that is beyond the scope that is agreed to in this statement of work. So as we say, this digital marketing services agreement is um, pretty thorough and is really intended to make it easy for you and your clients to come to terms on your services and to protect your interest as you move forward with your business. If at any time you'd like additional information about this agreement or other help with your business, you can always schedule a consultation with one of the attorneys at Smithers and Umewabo. And we just want to thank you for coming to the Contract Bank.